Hey guys, so quick little running and life update for you guys here on the Lone Trail channel. So if you follow me here and elsewhere on social media, you probably know that over the last few months, I've been building up to my first marathon. It's been an exciting process. I've made huge running gains and uh, it's just been overall great until I experienced a big setback, which forced me to go from plan A to plan B. And ultimately last week I experienced yet another big setback uh, which forced me to go from plan B to plan C. So that's where we're at right now and I want to share some of the insights and learning lessons that I've experienced during this process uh, with you guys so that you can use them next time you experience a setback because setbacks are inevitable sometimes especially in the sport of running and marathoning where you're just doing a few races every year and building up to them over a long time you know if anything goes wrong and it will there's always something that goes kind of wrong in a build-up then you will have to be able to deal with that in a constructive way so uh, i guess i'm giving you kind of a life update and telling you what happened for me but also sharing some of the lessons that i learned so that you can apply them in your life so let's get into it All right, so um, quick, long story short kind of thing. Um, I was going, everything was going along very nicely. I was gaining fitness, I was feeling good, I was training well. And then uh, suddenly I started getting dizzy. So I had, and it's still ongoing. So for like six weeks now, I've been having this dizzy feeling, very strange and, and it came out of nowhere. and. Uh, it's not an obvious nutritional deficiency or anything like that. I've done blood tests, everything is normal, and there's nothing that stands out as an obvious cause, although I have many theories, of course. I'm not going to get into those today, but uh, the point is, uh, it sort of made me have to reevaluate my training. I lost a few training days, even a training week in there. Uh, but still trained, you know, halfway consistently, didn't lose too much fitness. But it had to, it forced me to go from plan A to plan B and, and seeing that my sub three hour goal on the marathon was probably not going to happen. And I had to sort of settle with maybe running a little slower, but that was okay. Um, but then last week I, I was hit with a fever. I had four days of, of pretty high fever and a stomach ache and, um, probably an infection probably not related to the original situation i think could be though who knows uh, so that took me out for a week basically uh, and yeah so that sucks and that means that now we're just three weeks out from marathon and i've just had a week completely off being sick and it usually takes about a week for the body to get back into full swing again and you don't want to just like suddenly hit uh, the body with like heavy training right after a virus infection of some sort uh, so in order to preserve my health and be conservative and not take any risks with my health um, I, I'm going to have to postpone my marathon debut uh, unfortunately I'm I don't feel like it makes sense for me to now just two weeks out from a marathon start suddenly trying to catch up uh, so that's pretty unfortunate. Um, I will, however, probably still run the marathon, but I'm just, I'm not considering it a race. I'm going to be running it pretty easy um, just to cover the distance as an easier long run. But, you know, it's still disappointing. I wanted to run it hard. I wanted to run fast and I can't do that or I'm choosing not to do that rather. And I probably wouldn't be able to run very fast anyway because because I have, haven't been able to do the race specific training that's very important over the last six to eight weeks leading into a race. So that's the situation. I, I got depressed obviously when this happened. I'm still kind of depressed sometimes about it. It sucks, it's not cool to have to go through this and of course the health situation in general, just being sick. Uh, with a fever, but also having the dizziness is just very frustrating, but that's just how it is sometimes. And so after going through an initial phase of depression and uh, sort of rejecting the situation and hoping that I would still be able to run the marathon, I've now come to grips with the fact that I am not doing it. And um, that's okay. 
And so one of the big lessons that I've learned in this process is that it's important to have several goals. So several plans, plan A, B, and C. So my plan A was obvious, but then plan B was that, you know, may, I'll still race the marathon, but I'll just uh, not be able to hit my, my predetermined goal of sub three. Uh, or, you know, perhaps another version of plan B would be, I'm not racing that marathon, but I'm doing another one uh, somewhere else, like a month later, right? That was another one of my plan Bs. And um, as, as I went along with the, the, the sickness, the dizziness, I was sort of constantly gauging, you know, okay, if, I'm, if I get well by next week, I can still make it in time for the marathon. But if it takes two weeks, I'll have to scrap that marathon and do the other marathon, etc. So the idea of having several plans and getting inspired about all of them I think that's a big sort of um, takeaway here, uh, to not be locked down and it has to be on that particular day. Because marathon running and, and running in general, it's a sport where, you know, there are setbacks. I mean, any sport will have setbacks, which means that you, you will have to stay adaptable and flexible with your training. And a lot of times elite runners will not actually, they won't actually decide which race they're doing uh, before like just a few weeks out or they may might even sign up for several races and take the one that's most appropriate depending on how their training went so you've got to be flexible with training psychologically it's hard to have a setback um, and I don't know what to say about that other than you just have to give it time and you just have to accept the situation do your best to just accept the situation don't reject it it is what it is right and here's an important thing to know. The fitness that I built up over the summer leading into towards this marathon, it's not lost, right? It's in the bank. I've deposited kilometers in the bank and that's been helping to build my fitness. Now, I'm not race ready. I haven't done the last few weeks of the buildup. I haven't been able to, you know, do the, all the very, very race specific training that in the final week. So I'm not sharp and ready to race, but the base fitness, the capillaries, the mitochondria, the heart, all those sort of base fitness aspects, they're there. I've built them up and they're there. Now, that means that even though I've lost a little bit of fitness now from a week off and from inconsistent training last month, I'll still be able to keep building on that and take it with me going forward. So in the grand scheme of things, and you gotta realize I have a big long-term plan. So if I'm missing this marathon, that's not the end of the world because there's n more marathons to come and I'm probably doing a marathon next spring instead and I'm gonna crush it, right? So, so going forward, I'm looking at the long-term situation here and realizing that I can keep building. On the, on the fitness that I've already built. So that's what I'm gonna do over the winter. My plan then is to do an extended base training phase where I'm just taking my current fitness over the last few months that I've built over an extended base, marathon specific base phase. And I'm just taking it with me going forward and I'll keep building. I'll keep building the volume over the winter. I'll get up to 100, 110, 120, maybe even 130 kilometers per week by the summer. I'll be going to Nice in France uh, next week. And uh, that's a good place to train. Um, that's where I was gonna do marathon, of course. I'll still do the marathon probably as an easy long run, which will be again, part of my big aerobic base building phase over the winter. And then after Christmas, I'll come home for Christmas and then I'll go to La Palma on the Canary Islands. And that's a great place as well to just run in the mountains between the volcanoes and just build that aerobic base like like a champion. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take um, my current, current fitness and bring it forward with more volume, easy running, build up that body, build up the strength, and then we'll just add a little bit of a race specific build up, you know, eight weeks, 12 weeks uh, next spring, and then we'll be ready to, to hit it uh, then instead. And we'll be crushing three hours, no doubt. I'm gonna go sub three uh, in the spring instead. That's probably for certain. I think. So as you can see, I'm actually quite excited about my current situation. I've been able to turn it around from a disappointment and a frustration to something like, you know what, that's okay. I'm going to go and I'm going to do my best in just building a 
strong base because that's the main thing, right? For me at this point, early in my career, I want to build a strong base. So the fact that I'm not able to race this autumn sucks, but in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't even matter. And as long as I can get my health back and I can get this dizziness thing under control, uh, which hopefully will happen soon, um, I'll be fine. So takeaway, um, when you're hit with a setback, be flexible, have a plan A, plan B and a plan C. Uh, look at your possibilities and accept your situation moving forward. And realize that just because you're losing a week or two or three or even a month of training, it doesn't mean that all the training you did was in vain. You're bringing it with you going forward and it's all part of the uh, deposits that you're making into the aerobic bank accounts that you are building for for decades to be honest uh, and and that's all good anyway let's wrap it up it's a beautiful autumn day here pretty cold but uh, beautiful very beautiful and yeah i'm excited uh, i'm having a week off now obviously the last week was a week off because i was sick and with the um, fever and everything and now i'm taking another week off training completely just to reset relax uh, make sure the body is healthy and then next week we'll start that slow build up uh, or base phase i guess you could call it uh, in nice france and just get serious about some volume all righty thanks for watching Right, if you, I just want to mention a few things, I guess a few plugs at the end here. If you're interested in monthly Q&A videos, you should check out our Patreon page. I'll put a link to it here or in this, and in the description as well, where we post monthly uh, Q&A videos uh, and other little snippets, updates, as well as uh, uh, coaching, of course, on mgjcoaching.com. There's a link in the description. So if you're interested in coaching, uh, I'd love to help you out with that. So check out the links in the description and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Have an awesome day. See you around.